So I'm planning to do today, I'm planning to talk about lightweight cloth in particular, like this one. This is a mohair number here. We're talking about how the sleeve goes in particular, as in how it hangs. And that's more or less how it hangs from the back, how it rolls. I'll bring it more into the shot actually. And how it hangs around the front as well. So when it comes to sleeves in particular, um, it's all about putting the fullness in and how the pitch of the sleeves hang. And most of the time, your sleeve pitch will hang halfway across the pocket. So we're gonna talk about positioning of the sleeve and how you put it in. And obviously according to different shape guys, you know, if you're a bigger guy and you've probably got a bigger belly, your, your arms are gonna swing back a little bit more the way you stand in your posture. So therefore you have to have the sleeves pitched a little bit more back because of how your the posture is gonna be when the guy's got or woman's got the jacket on. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that, but mainly today I wanna to talk about um, measuring the armhole, how to measure the armhole to measure on the sleeve to allow for a certain amount of fullness that you might need on your armhole. Every armhole is gonna be different size depending on the, the customer, um, but I'm just gonna give you an average kind of gauge of how to gauge, especially on lightweight fabrics, how to gauge how much fullness to put in. So the idea is to be able to put in a nice sleeve that is clean and doesn't have too much fullness and puckering that you know you, you guys might come across and might wonder how to get rid of it or um, little tweaks and problems that you may have with sleeves like making it lie really cleanly without any you know dips in there and just making it hang really flush. So um, the number one thing is making sure the sleeve is actually cut right um, and has the right shape. That's a real good start and has the right amount of fullness. So if we can start off that today by um, measuring the fullness around the armhole and then we can get started. But let me just um, show you what, what we're gonna try and aim for is having a, a nice ropes head sleeve head as well. Yeah, this is what we're gonna end it off with, having a nice rope sleeve head. I've done one sleeve here already and I've machined it in. I can bring it, machine this side in, but I haven't put the rope sleeve head in yet. And I haven't tacked down or basted around the canvas to hold the canvas and the, the, the front sleeve in. So, so I've got this based here and we're gonna pretend it's like a, a jacket that's gonna, it's gonna be finished basically. So what we're looking at here is when you have an armhole, you're looking at the run of how that bit is. I'll put it down on the board later and I'll flip the camera down so you can see more what I'm talking about. But you're looking at the run of the sleeve basically, because if you do it too straight, yeah, there's a chalk mark there. If you do it too straight, that was original mark, then what happens is kind of like an illusion to the eye. It kind of looks too straight. And it's the same with a lapel. When you're actually marking a lapel and, and you're doing it on the, on the top bit here, if you slightly curve it in and then you flip it back out, by the time you flip it out that side, it looks straight, if you know what I mean. If I was to mark that straight on the outside and then flip it round like that, it would look like it's coming out a little bit. It's a bit of an illusion to the eye. So it's the same kind of principle with doing this bit as well. Instead of doing it straight, where it was marked originally, I slightly curve it out. So therefore, when I put the sleeve in, it's got more of a nicer run to it, if you see what I mean. So you can see on this lightweight one here, it kind of comes in and then it goes out a little bit and then goes back out again. So it's got a nice run to it, yeah? So that's just talking about the shape of the, the armhole. I'm just gonna measure this one now, yeah? So let me show you how to quickly measure the armhole. Okay, you can see it there, yeah? So again, it's a seam away, yeah? I'm moving it all the way around. Almost pinching the cloth and the tape measure as I spin it round, okay? Never enough. And whatever measurement you got to the top of the seam there, you remember it and then you carry it off when you're coming back around here, yeah? And do the same thing coming back around there, okay? So that's 20 and a quarter, all right? So I literally just probably see it a bit more in the front there. I was measuring that much away, okay? All the way around. So I've measured the armhole. 
and I'll write that measurement down. So that was 20 and a quarter. When you come to do the armhole depth, yeah, all you need to do, you can either do it two ways. You can divide that whole circumference by three, yeah, 6.7, right? So remember that measurement, 20 and a quarter divided by three is 6.7, okay? Right, so that's the armhole depth. That's what it, divided by three, the circumference the armhole depth is 6.7. That's the depth, that's this, yeah? Right, so I'm gonna measure it anyway because I always measure twice. As my grand would say, measure twice, cut once, right? So the way you hold the jacket to get a, because you, you could be kind of confused on how to exactly hold the armhole. And this is how most coat makers, I would say, generally hold the armhole of a jacket when you're putting a sleeve in to see how it hangs or if you're taking the depth, right? So you just have your hand like that, that's it, yeah? And that way, it kind of mimics someone being in the jacket in a way like if his, that was his shoulder and to how he wear it. You wouldn't wear it like that. That would be someone too skinny. So you just kind of hold it like that. Yeah, so it's a bit more oval shape. So I'm gonna measure that depth now. And that depth is six and three quarters. Okay, six and three quarters. And you're just measuring literally from the top of there down to there, all right? Six and three quarters. So six and three quarters. Yeah, that is 6.7. That's spot on anyway, all right? So we'll leave that like that. We've measured that. Now we're gonna go to the actual sleeve, all right? Figure it out. Right, so here we go. I'm gonna measure that armhole now. So the measurement that we had before, I usually write on a sleeve, was 20 and a quarter, all right? So, what I'm gonna do is take a seam off here, yeah? And measure it all the way around, a seam away as well, okay? So remember what the depth was. The depth was six and three quarters. I'll take a seam off the top and I measure down six and three quarters. Yeah, that comes to there. So that will be, I want it on the right camera shot here, so I lift it up a bit. That will be, depth it's already kind of got a line there anyway okay and that's the depth that comes all the way to there so we're all right we're all right for sleeve depth yeah these sleeves are spot on so the next bit i'm going to measure all the way around there like that all right so what i'm going to do start from here whether you want to do it in centimeters or inches but i do inches so start from there seam away and the way i have the tape measure you can see i'll have it standing up so i can kind of get round the corners easier, all right? So I wanna measure around 20 and a quarter, all the way around, okay? Coming around there, uh, 20 and a quarter, comes to about there, yeah? That's 20 and a quarter. But I always measure twice, cause you just wanna make sure, yeah? So now I've got that measurement, I would say roughly for a 20 inch sleeve, I usually, make, as a gauge, I always say, if it's 21, and a, um, 21 inches circumference for a sleeve, that's a general, I would say, um, average sleeve. Um, anything below 21 inches circumference, um, you go under an inch and a half. And anything above um, 21 inches, I go above an inch and a half. But again, that all depends on if it's a lightweight or a heavier fabric. Lightweight fabrics, I generally do about inch and a half if it's 21 inches um, circumference or fullness. And the fullness, what I'm talking about, is the extra bit that goes in the sleeve that you have to ease in around the sleeve head to give it that nice curve and the fullness in the, in the actual sleeve head to give it the width across there as well, right? So on lightweight fabrics, you're looking at about an inch and a half for a 21 inch sleeve, yeah? For a lightweight one, right? For a heavier one, you're looking about two inches um, fullness that you can put in extra um, above two and a quarter to two and a half. Sometimes it all depends because heavier the fabric, the more fullness you can get in. And that's the beauty of when you've got heavier fabric that you work with, you can put as much fullness as you can get in there and you can get away with it by shrinking it away and you, you can't really notice it. And this is the reason why I wanted to uh, target 
the lightweight sleeves today because once you can master doing lightweight sleeves and how much fullness you put in it when it comes to heavier fabrics it's going to be a lot more easier to work with and you can kind of hide a lot more things in terms of if you put too much fullness in there you can always press it away a little bit you know and get rid of it whereas with lightweight ones if you've got too much fullness in there you can't get rid of it and it'll always it'll always stay in there you know so you, you you've got to kind of um, be careful how much fullness you put in there so anyway i've just done this mark here so i'm going to measure how much fullness i want for this so this is under 21 inches so i'll say i'll go less than an inch uh a half fullness i'll go about inch and a quarter inch and a quarter yeah so inch and a quarter is there it comes about there okay so that there is where i want my sleeve to stop okay and so this is cut really good anyway so this is a uh, an extra seam there so i'll leave it where it is yeah i'll leave it where it is okay and um, when you come to doing the base or anything like that you you just put the sleeve in as it's been given to you if either it's by a cut or whatever and they've given it to you you just you just put it in as it is or if you're doing it for yourself or whatever you just put it in and then you'll judge after the fitting if you have to do alterations to the shoulders or whatever then you'll gauge if you need to actually um you know redo your sleeve all depending on how the fitting's gone or whatever yeah so um yeah I always say look at the shape of your sleeve as well yeah and um you know you can get sleeves that it is a this is a good uh kind of lesson is in to train your eye to see what to look for when it comes to putting in a sleeve my basic principle for doing sleeves when i'm putting them in i always look at this bit here yeah if this bit here is like i'll give you an example if it goes like that where you've got the cloth on a bit like that then i know the sleeve shape is not it's not a nice shape it's too straight because what you're looking at is i'll bring the jacket over up one sec what you're looking at is is this point here yeah has to fit i think this is the wrong side this side there we go we're getting a camera shot so this is the right side to this side isn't it yeah so this point here yeah has to fit this point here so i look at so there's the pitch there i look at this seam going on the pitch mark there and i would say about an inch either side of that seam i want that to fit that part of the armhole okay that is a good guide for me to know that okay this is actually going to fit in this armhole yeah it's not always like that because sometimes you don't know exactly where the pitch is going to be obviously this has been tried on a customer before and he's made had some before made for him so they've changed the pitch mark of where it should be so they know it definitely goes there whereas when you start enough doing a um a fresh job so to speak let me find where my chalk is there we go when you're doing a fresh job um so it's a new customer and you want to know where to put the pitch mark what everybody well the basic principle i i go by is i just look straight down like that is in a line straight down yeah i mark straight down like that and i look straight on the bottom and i go straight across okay and then i half that all right and once i half that i'll go back a little bit of a quarter yeah so go straight down straight across the bottom half that yeah down the middle yeah and then off at the back a quarter that's where i always start my pitch so this pitch here is a little bit more further back than what i would usually have done it but because it's a different customer every customer is different this pitch here seems to fit the customer all right but what i would do i would gauge this point here yeah as a guide for when you're doing your you're cutting your sleeve or whatever you're going to do or you're going to put it in i'll lay the sleeve there and see how it looks first because if it looks all right around there then it's more than likely it will fit okay and then when you're actually doing your sleeve and when it's hanging there you won't get it puckering up inside there or lifting up and it'll it'll kind of it will just kind of roll around nicely and hang nicer okay 
So um, that's just a rough, rough guide. Like I say, every sleeve is different, but it's a general, like, easy guide to just go by just to put your sleeve in, just to get it on the customer or yourself or whatever and see how it looks, yeah? And then you can start changing the position of your pitch according to how your sleeve is hanging and, 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 and that's it, all right? So, again, on um, this bit here, you can see it a bit closer now, how that was the original mark there and I've just scooped it out a little bit just to give it a bit more of a shape yeah so when it goes around it's a nicer run okay this one has still got a little bit of fullness in it you can tell it's wrinkling just a little bit but obviously if it was a heavier one you wouldn't see that you'll get away with it the pitch bit here yeah what you might have a problem is when you're making it for the same customer yeah and um, it's the same pattern same sleeve cut you might have had a, a heavier job that you've cut for the customer and the sleeve fits in nicely, yeah? Where it's gone around there and you don't have this back bit doing any of that because it, it's dropped down too far. You don't have none of that. The back pitch here has been able to um, come up here higher so that it hangs nicely and sh nice and straight, yeah? But on the same pattern, but lighter cloth, what tends to happen is when you're basing it in, because you can't put as much fullness going around, that back pitch there ends up being lower so when it ends up being lower that means you end up having that bit like that when the customer's wearing it in it it drapes at the back bit there because it can't hang as nicely because obviously the pitch can't be based in higher because all the fullness can't be fitting yeah get that so what i do yeah and i wouldn't advise this for everybody and especially if you're if you've got a job that has been done from a cutter and they want you to put it together just you know, don't do not do this yourself. This is when you're working in your own jobs or if your own clients and you're, you're happy with it. What I tend to do, I tend to um, misplace the seam. So basically what I do, I'll show you my pattern. So this is a sleeve head here. I was just showing you, right? So what I tend to do, I tend to cut off just a little bit. I skim a little bit off the back there. I'll show you. I'll mark it. It's just a little bit, just a little bit off there. Not that much, right? You gotta be careful, don't grade it like you're taking off the top there and then you come in. You don't need to do that because if you if you take off the top, yeah, and then you come in, then what you're doing, you're robbing the top sleeve and you're gonna make it tight when you do that, yeah? So I don't wanna cut off none anyway because I want as much room as I can get across there. But for the sake of that back pitch on a light fabric coming up more so you can put more fullness in, I need to take off a little bit off the back, yeah, and still put as much fullness as I can in there. So that's what I do now. That's a little tip. But like I said, don't you know? Don't don't just cut off lows and because you'll end up making the sleeve tight. So I just take off a little quarter and then I try to still put as much fullness across there as I can, so it still looks clean enough and it still hangs nicely. Okay. Start off with that armhole again, right? You always start off with that pitch. And the main thing when you're basing around is just lay it flat, just to see where it wants to go still. Even, cause if it's not cut, so say like you got this, you know, someone else cut it and that bit there has too much cloth on it and it hasn't been cut with a nice round to it. Then just lay the pitch mark where the pitch mark is and let it go. Just let that bit go where it wants to go, yeah? And then just stitch. Just make sure you can see that you're still stitching a seam underneath, all right? Even if there's extra cloth up. But try not to push too much up because you can do the extreme of pushing too much cloth up because you want to clear the armhole and make sure it looks clean and end up making it tight. So you don't want to do that neither, okay? So just lay, lay it flat, see where it wants to go. And then this bit here, go around your armhole. I'm going to show you where I put the, the fullness, all right? So going around... You go around flat, not putting any fullness in. Yeah, just small stitches. And you just ease, ease it around like this. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, ease it around like that. Ease it round. Okay. And then you'll get to about halfway. And don't worry if the stitches aren't completely straight because you're gonna go inside 
those stitches as well. You're going to do another row. So as you come more around to the round bit, yeah, you're going to start to put the fullness in. And if you want to know where exactly to put the fullness in, okay, let me just move this out this way and bring this flat one back. As a, a rough guide, I would say measure down, down from the crown, right, which is about there. Okay. And that's where you would start your fullness. And you can kind of see it as well. I mean, different sleeves, different you know, size, but it's an, that's an average. So you can see from there straight and then right around, you've got the curve there. You want to put more fullness. When I get to the middle bit, I don't do any fullness. I just start it there, do more there, less there, and then nothing there, yeah? And then nothing all around there. And then the same here, less, less, and then loads more there. I'll carry on. So when you get about halfway, so this is probably where that two inch and a quarter mark is where I start to put the fullness in, yeah? What I do from there, you spin it in itself. We turn it in and then flip it out, yeah? And then that way, usually I'll sit down and I'm doing this on many, my knee, and I'm curling it like that. So, that way, because I've got it on my knee and it's got kind of a, a curl to it and it's aiding me basing the sleeve in, it kind of makes it easier to put the fullness in. All right, so you do that and you come around. Around, putting more fullness. More fullness there. All right. And also that stitch that I've done here, that you saw in the beginning, that one there, okay? That not just gives you a guideline for where to base your sleeve back from, but also it gives a, a, a mark at the back there, which you're gonna need later on for finishing your sleeve. And I'll show you about that, because that's basically where I use as a guideline for where I'm gonna cut my canvas to know where the cut where I, st and I need to stop cutting it basically yeah so I cut my canvas back to that mark there that's one of the reasons why I do this stitch here and also that stitch there I do that on the back of the sleeve as well but I draw it in because you need to make sure all that you know surplus cloth a little bit you have a little bit of drape at the back of your sleeve arm you draw in a, you draw the drawing stitch and that keeps it nice and tight and keeps it clean in all right so I'm gonna keep going around now and I'm hitting the center seam well, on the sleeve, the top shoulder seam, sorry. And I'm gonna go flat there because you gotta remember this is a lightweight job. You're not really gonna need any fullness right on that bit there, yeah? I, f I, find, I find that you don't need it much at all. It's just going round. It's more or less on the flat bits, you don't need the fullness. It's on the round bits, if you see what I mean. So now I'm coming off that. I start to build up my fullness again. And I put more in now as I go around. Yeah. And now I'm aiming to go and stop. Usually what I do, I stop at the back seam here. Yeah. And I always check my sleeve then. What I do, I flip it back out and then I was going to flip the camera around again, but I think <laughs> it'll be a bit of a mess. So usually what I do, I'm going to try and show you here. What, what I do, I flip it around and I see how the camera, uh, the sleeve hangs. Yeah. And see where the pitch of the sleeve is. Because usually you want to aim halfway across the pocket. Yeah. That's generally a guideline. We, we aim for halfway across the pocket as a standard kind of, uh, you know, hanging position for the sleeve. That's a guideline. Yeah. For a first fitting or whatever. Around again. And then, and also, I'm also checking the fullness in the sleeve, making sure it's all right, and I've sewn around it okay as well, yeah? So you're, you're checking two things. The fullness is all right, and also hanging in the right position. And then I just flip it around again and carry on. I move this inlay bit out of the way because it gets a bit messy, and I need to see what's going on underneath, yeah? So with the back bit, it's always tricky because you've got to hold it in a certain way that the cloth goes where it needs to go, yeah? So that's my chalk, my, my tax, tailor's tax, and that's the mark there. I'm hoping that you guys can see this all right. That's the mark there, 
that you need to follow, okay? I've seen behind that. So what I do, I try to do it in stages. So I've just come past that seam there and I'm trying to lay a little bit of fullness in it. It is a little bit tricky doing this one, but it's about getting used to handling it with your uh, hands and, and uh, stitching at the same time. Multitasking, but it's all right. You can do it. So yeah, you just slightly start feeding a bit more fullness in there, yeah? Because you need more fullness built up after that bit. So yeah, I didn't stay weird to stop the fullness, did I? So when you come around the, the shoulder seam, more f um, start to build up the, um, the fullness again. When you come nearer to the, the seam there on the back of the underarm, you do less fullness, yeah? About half an inch less fullness and then just no fullness, yeah? And then you start building it back up again after the seam, okay? So carrying on again. And then you see how I'm, I'm fixing it, doing like that. And I'm fixing it and I'm seeing it where this wants to go. Let it go where it wants to go, yeah? If it wants to go that way, when you're holding it, that means it, it wants to go up more, yeah? It's not hanging right. So you just kind of try and make it, uh, assist it in the way it wants to go by holding it as flat as you can and seeing where the cloth wants to lie, all right? So I'm gonna carry on now. Carry on going around. So we nearly finished this bit. And then after that, we can uh, see how it looks. Right, so now I'm coming to the bottom bit. So yeah, now I you can build up, whatever fullness you have left, you can always build it up and leave it under the arm, yeah? You can always leave it under the arm because you're not, you're not gonna see it anyway because under the arm and you shouldn't have too much fullness anyway, yeah? But if you have anything left, you can always just leave it there. And even if you don't have any fullness, then it's fine. Either way, whatever you've got left, just put it under there. So, you see that, it's fitting okay. Uh, so far, so good, all right? So I've got enough fullness in there, and that's an inch and a quarter fullness, yeah? On a lightweight job, okay? And that's, that's for me, that's more than enough, okay? So what I tend to do, just clean up your sleeve, just to see how it looks. I've got this side now, yeah? I'm gonna hang it up. Remember what I said? Hold your hand just natural like that, yeah? And that looks okay. That looks all right. I'm happy with that. Yeah, what you're looking for is the roll around there. Make sure it's rolling nicely. There's no, like I said, there's no puckering up in there. That's the most important thing, especially on a lightweight job, all right? But like I said, because I looked at the armhole shape and I knew the armhole shape was similar to the shape of the armhole of the jacket, then I knew that there's a good chance it'll look flush and it'll go in nicely, okay? So like I say, if it, the shape of the armhole bit there, inch either side of the, the seam, if it doesn't match up to the armhole on a jacket, then you either need to get it recut again or you just let the cloth go up and then baste it in so you don't have it kicking out, yeah? So it's got a nice amount of fullness there, just to check the back as well. Back is not bad, back is not bad. It's not bad, could be better, could be a lot better, could be a lot better. It could be a little bit too much fullness there, so I could drop it underneath because I've got room under there, yeah? But the back you always got to tweak up and feel about because it's so difficult to do, it does take a little while to kind of feel about with that. But the main thing is, once you've got the front bit right and the pitch is right, it's going halfway across the pocket, yeah? Once that's there, then the back bit you just fiddle about with until you get it right, yeah? So that's done. And next, I'm gonna, so this sleeve here, I haven't put this in properly yet. I've just machined around it, okay? So what I'm planning to do is show you how, obviously I do the, the mat and how I cut it out. So that's what we're gonna do next. But what I would have done on this one, I would have sewed around the canvas to the sleeve. I'd have done the stitch around there to hold it all in. But I'm gonna do it on this one instead, okay? So basically the sleeves are done, so we don't have to worry about taking time out and going to the machine and all that, all right? So, the canvas. The reason I'm gonna show you the canvas for a different reason, sleeve head, it's not for that. So what you wanna do is straight away, you wanna do it on the bias, yeah? So I'm just gonna mark it here. I was looking for another color chalk, but it's all right. I use this on the lightweight 
fabrics, yeah? And there's a reason why I use it on the lightweight fabrics. Is because it holds it really well. And it also helps the, um, the mat on the sleeve head roll. I'll show you why. So just cut a strip of that. Strip of its chest canvas, um, body canvas, yeah? You can shrink it as well. I tend to shape mine, yeah? You can shape it. Yeah, shrink it down, shape it. My canvas was pre shrunk anyway, so all I have to do is just do that. Shape it, okay? Put that to the side. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my Demet, all right? So usually your Demet, it will come straight anyway, but what you want to do is cut, cut it on the bias as well, yeah? This is for your sleeve head. So I would say cut about, I better get some measurements for you guys, right? All right, so you need to cut about, I would say two and a quarter inches, yeah? Two and a quarter inches, yeah? And then in a strip of that, and then the next one you need to do about an inch and three, let me say inch and three quarters, yeah? Inch and three quarters. Okay. So, you, now you've got two strips of those, right? Okay. I cut them off, I cut them off the ends. And then, I might need to do one sleeve, so I'll just show you one, yeah? I've got one I prepared earlier as well, so don't worry, I won't have to take time out to see me on the machine. So, right, what I'm gonna do is show you how I fold it. So, you might hear screaming outside, I've got kids that are running up and down, but it's all good, it's all good. That's what happens when you're working from home, man. Right, so, you see what I've just done then? I've just laid the smaller layer on top of the bigger layer, right? And now I've just slightly left a little bit of a gap at the end, yeah? But what I'm gonna do, the reason why I've done that, because I need to fold it over, right? And I'm folding it over, and because I'm folding it over, I, this, the under one is pushing onto the top one, yeah? So I don't want it to stick out as well. So what I'm gonna do, fold it like that, and I would say that's on the double there, that's about five eighths, okay? Put more in the camera shot. About five eighths, okay? So, you got that bit, yeah? All right, so once you've done that, yeah, what you do, here's one I've got, prepared, you machine it on a big stitch, yeah? Big stitch all the way down. So that is about three eighths, so say a seam, you stitch it a seam. So I fold it over about five eighths and then I stitch it a big seam, well, a, a seam, yeah, and not big stitch, okay? And then so basically I've got layers there going on now, right? I'll put it more in the camera shot. Yeah, I've got layers going on. You got that, yeah? Cool. And then what I do with this is, usually I steam it as well and I, I shape it in, yeah? And I shape it like that. I'm hoping this camera's at the right angle. Yeah, and I usually shape it like that. So the difference between this one and the standard ones that you use is, yeah, this I find it's a little bit too spongy foamy, yeah? So when you put it in the sleeve head, it just it just makes it too, too big and too spongy, yeah? And it's hard to press it down because it springs back out too much. I don't know what it is, I think it is foam. And then also you got this in there as well, which doesn't help, it just makes it more bigger. But, um, you know, I'm not dissing it, it's fine if you wanna use it, but I like a nice, natural, um, soft sleeve head as well, yeah? And, and that's why I use this. And also, what I find with this canvas, sometimes it pushes out and you can see it on the outside of your sleeve and your sleeve is here. So um, yeah, I, I, I don't really like to use it, but you, if you, this is all you got, then fine, just cut this bit out and then use this. But I, I would suggest getting some Demet because this is a lot softer to use and work with. And you end up, if you like nice sharp um, sleeve head as well, rope sleeve head, this is what I use to do that, okay? So now what I'm gonna show you is the uh, next jacket, all right? And that's the red one. And I'm not basting around and keeping it in. So if I go back as well, before I do this bit, I wanna go back to this bit, yeah? This bit here, 
where I use this, like I said, I don't use it in the Melton. I don't use it in there. That's not for that. Where I use this, okay, I've put one in already anyway, is there, okay? And what this does, it's, it not only stops, especially in lightweight jackets or fabric, it not only stops it from moving and stretching, yeah, but also when you... If you can see already how sharp that seam is looking because it's already got that heavier canvas stitched at the back of it, it gives it more of a sharp um, imprint in there, if you see what I mean. And that's what is a good uh, lift off from, so to speak, from the, 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 the met when you put it in, yeah, from the rope sleeve head. It's, um, it's like it's got a stronger foundation for when you put the sleeve um, head in, it, it's got something more to lift off from if that makes sense okay so um what was i gonna do show you how to wait one second bear with me i want to show you on this jacket here so this is one we basically before the blue one right so when you i'll just show you where you put it in from so when you're putting this in okay i'll do another stitch in between there yeah and then as i'm doing the second stitch that's when i start to put this in and i base that in okay so I'm basing it at the same time, all right? And then once I've done that, then I stitch. And where I'm stitching is just behind the white stitch, okay? So just give me a heads up for where I do that, all right? So, right, what I'm gonna do now is flip this over and start to baste around the jacket. So, right, so from here, from the underarm, yeah, just make sure it's flush. And this is the thing with lightweights as well. You need to make sure that everything is clean, yeah? So when you're going around here, you start there because obviously that's where the canvas should be stopping anyway, yeah? You ease it round, yeah? And you, while I'm easing it round, I'm pushing my finger up like that. So any surplus cloth that is left is getting pushed to the side, okay? because you don't want to end up having surplus cloth across the chest as well. And this is one of the last things that I do to make sure that I don't. All right, so I'm basing this round just to attack and attach, sorry, attach the uh, canvas sleeve um, all together. All right, so I carry on doing that. I don't do it in a straight stitch, so it's a bit, I kind of do it as a, a padding stitch in a way. It's like an angle, right? So you see me going over, using my sleeve board for this, yeah? Of course. So I'm going around there, and then I push it like that, all right? And I keep going, yeah? And as I'm getting to the top bit as well, I push it over, and I'm coming across, I push it out the back, yeah? And double stitch on the top there, all right? And then, I'll flip it around the back and then I'm going to stitch basically the back bit okay the way bear with me so now what I'm going to do is put the the met in okay so I don't need to go all the way around this anyway I can just literally start it and then show you how I I kind of go through and how far I stitch away from the demet and the difference of how uh, big you can make it to how small you can make it in terms of how roped you want the sleeve head. All right. So once I've done that, sorry, I forgot to mention, you need to basically do, in, I use, I like to call it for uh, cord. It's a really strong cotton, right? So use that. Once you've based around the armhole, you use this to basically secure all the way around, right? And this stitch, yeah, it's like a back stitch and you're going forward, right? And you do this, don't know if you can see this properly, and you're literally, you're doing it right in the seam. You're going right in the seam there, okay? See when the needle's coming up? All right, and you're literally going back on yourself and you do that all the way around the armhole, okay? And you do that all the way around and that basically keeps it all together. So that base stitch that you've just done, that's 
this is the main stitch that's going to keep it all together okay so now i've done that what i'm going to do well i haven't actually gone around here as you can see but i don't want to bore you guys with all of that going away around because i just want to show you the the uh sleeve head row all right so what i'm going to do now i need to get a cotton i'm going to use machine cotton for this yeah uh maybe if i get my pad out as well so so you can see it a bit closer so i always start mine from the under um, seam yeah from the bottom there the front pitch mark that's where i'm starting and then you can basically just trim it off like that so it's at an angle okay it's facing down and then this is what i do i start off this bit really kind of i would say narrow so i'll show you by chalk marking it so i start off that bit really narrow like that yeah and then what you want to do is the stitch that i'm doing right is basically the same stitch that i've just shown you yeah is you're going back on yourself you're going back on yourself and you're going forward yeah so what i'm going to do is go back again look underneath and then stitch and where you're stitching might as well say you're going to stitch in the same line as where you stitched before with that red cotton yeah so right next to that seam there the machine stitch okay that's what i'm looking to do and you're not looking to pick up much all right you're just literally going back like that and forward okay and you flip it over go back and forward so you're going to do that all the way around the front so imagine the front bit and as you're going round the fullness part where you have more when it, the sleeve starts to curve that's where you need to come about i would say a good quarter about a quarter yeah you come about a quarter as soon as you hit the the mark we need to put the full stitch you come around a quarter and then you go all the way around okay and then you stop at your back seam there okay and then you just cut it off all right and that then will give you that nice rope sleeve head okay there you go that's it